Hello and welcome back to Sarah Assist. So today guys, I'm going to be sharing my strategy, my limited strategy for the 2023-2024 season on Sir Rare Fantasy Football. If you like the video, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you've not signed up to Sir Rare yet, sign up using the link below. You will get a free limited card to buy in your first five cards on auction. You'll also get to draft your teams as well, of course, to start playing the fantasy football game straight away. Okay then guys, let's get stuck in to today's video then. So as I say, today I'm going to be sharing my strategy in, in terms of the limited cards on so Rare for the 2023-2024 season. I'm sharing why I'm doing this strategy, the actual strategy itself of course, and I'll also be sharing my teams and some of my players as well for this strategy going forward for the rest of this season and probably beyond this season as well in terms of my limited collection. I will also be hoping to transition this tactic as well to my rare collection as well going forward, guys. Okay then, let's get stuck into it. So the strategy in general, guys, is going to be focusing more on a handful of teams in the so rare stratosphere. Of course, there's quite a lot of teams on so rare, and sometimes you can buy random players from different teams it's not really the best strategy, really. You're buying, even if they are maybe the best players, you're just buying players from different teams, different leagues. The best thing is to really sort of condense that down, really, guys, to just a few, a handful of teams, really, um, just to sort of really give you the best chance of getting to the top of the leaderboards. Especially now that Survey is becoming a lot more competitive with a lot more players joining the platform so guys let's go into this a little bit more then so what i've done um over the last few days and weeks is i've been looking at teams of the last five seasons in every single league i started with the european leagues um because generally you do get quite a lot of leagues where there's maybe one or two teams that dominate in that particular league Teams that spring to mind are probably teams like Benfica in um, Portugal. There's also teams like Barcelona, Real Madrid in Spain and, and teams like that. Usually dominating pretty much every single season. So I decided to go away, look at all the leagues in Europe. First of all, did Asia and America as well. But I started with Europe. I looked at the attack so in terms of the goals per game for every single league and every single team i looked at the um, goals per game on average over the last five seasons i also did that for the defense as well and i've managed to whittle it down to a few teams that i was going to initially target i then looked at my so rare squad of the, that i had at the time so looking at some of the best performing players and then seeing some of those best performing players um, fitted in or played for the teams that I'd whittled down from my research. From there, I then looked to the squads in, in, in these teams, look at every single player in terms of an SO5 quality and the potential, and then I've managed to break my teams down to just a few quality teams based on the good defence in a team. So if I went for, say, Galatasaray, as a defensive stack, so some good defenders there, and obviously they've got a good goalkeeper. I wouldn't then particularly necessarily have to buy the attacking players as well. So I've just sort of stuck to um, a sort of set of players from a defence, so teams that have got historically less goals conceded over the last five seasons. Um, some of the usual names come out, teams like uh, Benfica, Galatasaray, Club Bruges, um, I've not really gone with PSG. They would have obviously been high in these leaderboards. But some of those players are a little bit too expensive, I'd say. Um, and obviously they're having a few issues at the moment with a lot of players leaving. But obviously they're a good club, but that's not a club I've focused on. I will be going into the teams that I've focused on in a moment, guys. Um, but we'll just quickly go through this slide um, and what I'm talking about here. So as I say, players, I'll be targeting players from teams that historically have a good attack. I'll also be looking at teams that historically have a good defence, and I'll be targeting big teams. So generally, guys, the teams that fall under these categories here are generally big teams anyway. Then I'll also be sticking to a handful of teams for each competition. 
So when I say competition, I'm meaning Champion Europe, Challenge Europe, and also Asia and America as well. So I don't want to be having too many teams because I do find that I have quite a lot of notifications or quite a lot of teams to keep track of as well, guys, during a uh, season on so rare it's just too many teams to keep track of that's why i've really wanted to condense it down that's going to enable you to obviously do a little bit more research on that team uh, probably track that team a little bit easier as well and the players that play for that team and probably going to make you and help you make more informed decisions so let's just go on to the next slide then guys so as i say some more strategy outlines here I'm only going to be signing players from the teams that I've chosen. So going forward in my rewards, if I get any rewards from players from teams that I've chosen, I will be keeping them. If they're good in terms of SO5 or they've shown historical scores of being good. But if I'm winning any rewards that are not from my chosen team, guys, I will be selling those players. Okay, so as I say here, I'll only be signing players from chosen teams. I'll only be selling players that leave the chosen teams so that is a really good it's going to help me with my general squad management as well so if i get any players in rewards that um, are not from the chosen teams i will be selling those or if one of my players leaves the club in the transfer window then i will be selling those that don't move to another team that i've also selected I'll also be signing players only for my chosen teams as well. So if one of my teams signs someone new and they've got decent SO5 prospects, then I will potentially look to sign that player. So I'll also be using players for my chosen teams in the capped competitions. So obviously there's some players in um, some of the squads that are not maybe as good. You probably don't want them in your Challenge Europe team or Champion Europe but they might come in useful in the cap competitions, especially on a favourable fixture, and if that player has got the potential to hit some peak scores. So that is another thing that I'm going to be targeting and focusing on, guys. Obviously, if my team, say Club Bruges, have a really good matchup, uh, I put some of the star players in my Challenge Europe team, and then some of the other squad players that maybe don't consistently score well, but do are capable of scoring peak scores, then they're probably going to have a good chance of getting a peak score on a favourable fixture. And that's going to be an opportunity to put them in my cap competitions. And that could potentially be a sort of a ripple effect if my Challenge Europe team does well, potentially Club Rouge players, then there's a good chance that my cap team could do well as well. And it's the same principle with the under-23 competitions, guys. I will be mainly focusing in on under-23 players from my chosen teams. So... That means that when, again, if they have a favourable fixture, and a lot of the big teams do generally have good under-23 players as well. So that is a, another good strategy to have there. And let you sort of um, decide on which under-23 players to focus on as well, rather than just getting anybody who looks good and could potentially score high. I think this is a really good strategy just to sort of condense it down just a few teams and a few players. So, with that being said, guys, I'm now going to be going through the teams that I've chosen and some of the star players for those teams that I have in my collection currently. I will be going through the Champion Europe team, Challenge Europe, and also the cap teams and things like that as well. So, let's get stuck into it, guys. So, the Champion Europe team, I'm going to have players from these teams. Uh, in the defence, I've gone for Barcelona, Lazio, and Juventus. Now Juventus is is a bit of a anomaly really because I've only actually got Danilo for Juventus. But it's such a good card to have guys in the Champion Europe Division and I already owned his card and I do like Juventus as well. So I just decided to keep him anyway. But I won't be buying really any other Juventus players. That's just Danilo just to have in my squad because I've got good XP on him and he is a, a player that I like. He's really good of course on the scoring matrix. And then I've got Lazio as well, so they're probably going to be more of potentially a cap team, but of course they potentially could go into the Champion Europe team on a favourable fixture. And my main team that I'm focusing on in terms of defence in Champion Europe is Barcelona. Historically, they've had a fantastic defence in Europe, guys, over the last five seasons. That is obvious, really, because they are a big club. So majority of weeks, they are going to be favourites, guys. Barcelona 
potentially going to be favourites most weeks in the Spanish La Liga. And obviously one of the stars for them is to stay again. I've picked out Roman Gurley for the um, Lazio team in terms of defenders. And obviously we've already been through Danilo. They've already, Barcelona have also got some other good SO5 players as well in Koundé. They've also just signed Cancelo as well. So he's one that I brought into the club. Because obviously he just signed for Barcelona, one of my chosen teams. So it's someone that I did sign. Didn't go for Real Madrid because some of those players were a little bit too expensive. But of course, they are still a good choice in defence as well. In terms of attack, I've gone for Manchester United. That is a team that I support. And I have actually got Bruno Fernandes in my collection. So that was um, another anomaly really. Not many other United players that I'm really going to be wanting to buy at the moment. They are a little expensive. But Bruno Fernandes is a fantastic SO5 player. And of course, he's probably the best player that United have got at the moment. And it's a club that I support, so that is one team that I do like to have in there in the mix. And I have got Barcelona again. So Barcelona, I've got a fantastic attack record over the last five seasons. Obviously, that was probably due to Messi, but he's left now. But of course, they are still a fantastic attacking outfit. So I have got an attacking stack now for Barcelona as well. So I could potentially have a full stack there for Barcelona. Now that's not a choice really. I don't really like to go full stacks. But that could be an option some weeks um, on so rare. So De Jong is obviously one of their star players there. I've also got um, Gundogan as well for them. And Lewandowski up front of course. So some fantastic attacking options there. The Barcelona team. I've then also got a bit of a Lazio stack as well. They've got some really good players, guys, who are capable of scoring high. But it's another one that I could potentially use in the cap competitions as well. So I've got a Mobile there up front for them. They've, of course, got Alberto, Anderson, Sakakni as well. Some fantastic players there in the Lazio squad. So overall, guys, these are the four teams that I'm mainly going to be focusing on in the Champion Europe region. So let's move on to the Challenge Europe division then. So in terms of the Challenge Europe defence, I've gone for Club Bruges, Galatasaray and Zenit Petersburg. Now Zenit Petersburg, this is another anomaly here guys. I've only actually got Douglas Santos for that team. Douglas Santos is a bit of a um, Sir Rare favourite of mine and of course is a fantastic scorer as well on Sir Rare. And this is a card I've had for quite um, of a number of years now actually. Uh, so this is one that I wanted to keep. And obviously Zenit, they're a big team as well. Keep plenty of clean sheets. And Santos is a fantastic scorer. So I couldn't really get rid of him. The main defensive uh, pairing though are going to be Club Bruges. We've got a fantastic defensive record over the last five seasons. And the same story as well with Galatasaray. Um, Galatasaray have also got some fantastic defenders in their arsenal as well, including Angelino, who should have a good season for them this season, and Badaki as well is another option. And also Bowie as well, that could be a potential good under-23 option as well in my under-23 side. Club Rouge are also a good defensive stack, as I said. ming is still on form, looking a fantastic choice in defence there. In terms of attack, I've gone for Ajax, Club Rouge, and PSV. PSV are absolutely on fire this season. They've also got Veerman, of course. De Jong's just signed for them. And they've also got um, Neo Lang as well uh, in the midfield. So a fantastic attacking stack there you could form with PSV. Known for scoring a lot of goals as well. The Dutch league is known for goals as well, guys. So that's probably another reason for that. Same sort of story with Club Bruges as well. And Van Vanekin is a fantastic player on so rare, been scoring fantastically well. And they've also got some really good under-23 options as well that will probably slot into my under-23 team. And I've also gone for Ajax. Now, I know they've had their troubles recently, but historically, they have had a fantastic attack. And I think that will probably be the same story going forward as well, guys. They might have some shaky, a bit of a shaky start to the season, but I think at the end of the season, we're going to be seeing them near the top of the table. And Bergwis is a fantastic choice for them, especially now Tadic has left. I think Bergwis could potentially take some of the set pieces. He's currently injured, but I think he's just coming back from injury recently. I'm hoping he gets amongst the um, goals and assists this season for Ajax. So, as we can see, guys, again, we've got around five teams there that I'm going to be focusing on 
in the Challenger Europe division. Champion Asia then. So a bit of a different story in terms of the amount of teams that I'm going to be selecting here. So it's Champion Asia, Champion America. You don't generally get that many teams that dominate every single season. You might do in the American leagues potentially with um, River Plate, teams like that. But in terms of the MLS and the J League and the um, K League, you don't really get that many teams dominating as much as you do for some teams in Europe like Benfica and that sort of thing. So they have selected a few more teams in the Asia and America regions, but I will start with the Asia teams first. So in defence, I've gone for Vissel Kobe and Sanfresh Hiroshima and also Kawasaki. These teams are quite big teams in Japan, so that is one of the reasons I picked these. And there was some of the best defence as well over the last five seasons in Asia. Kawasaki have got some good players as well. Really good team. Yamane is one of the best defenders for them. I've also got Sasaki who for Sanfresh Hiroshima. It's obviously a fantastic choice. And also Okazaka as well for their goalkeeper. is another really good choice for them. Vissel Kobe have had a fantastic season as we know in the J-League so far. Sakai is a fantastic performer. They've also got Kikuchi. We'll hopefully be back towards the end of the season I'm hoping. If not next season. And of course the keeper is doing well as well. In terms of attack, a similar story really. I've gone for Vissel Kobe, Kawasaki Fontale, two historical teams are scoring plenty of goals. As Asaka is a fantastic player for them. He should hopefully stay for another season, I'm hoping. I've also got Waxizaka as well for Kawasaki. He's fantastic, especially when they're playing at home. He's a fantastic player to have. I've also got Suen FC, mainly due to Bitgram, another one of, one of my favourites on So Rare, so I've decided to go with Suen FC. Big Ram is probably the only player that will get in the Champion Asia team from that team. Um, but obviously some other players from Sun FC could be potentially good for the cap modes. And another one of, of my favourites and obviously a big hitter in the Asian divisions is Cecina. He plays for Digo in the South Korean League. Um, obviously that's a bit of a downer in terms of South Korean League as well with the scoring issues at the moment. But I'm sure that they will eventually sort out the opposite issues in terms of the scores in the South Korean leagues. And obviously Cecina is a fantastic player to have when he's playing in the Asia division. So as you can see there, I've got around another five teams there in terms of the champion Asia division guys. So again, another handful of teams to concentrate on. Champion America, there's quite a few teams here as you can see. Probably around six or five teams here. And that I'm going to be concentrating on the Champion Asia Division, Champion America, sorry, because there is not, um, as I say, there's not many teams that do dominate. Obviously, River Plate generally do dominate, though, so that is why I've got a defence, um, defensive stack there, and also an attacking stack that I'm going to be looking at for um, River Plate. In defence as well, I've also gone for Tigres with Guzman in goal, and they've also got some good defenders as well. I've also gone for Newells in defence as well. So Valaquez there. And obviously they've got Hoyos in goal as well. Fantastic defensive stat there. And I've also gone for another Argentinian team in the form of racing. Piova is a fantastic um, defender. And the goalkeeper I'm hoping is going to stay on as well. He's quite old now. But I am hoping he will stay for a few more seasons. I also like the um, utility of the Argentinian players as well. Because you do... They do pretty much play all year round. I think they only have about a month off. So fantastic utility for the Argentinian players. And I've also got Amani as well for River Plate. They've also got some good defensive options as well, of course. A lot of rotation there, but some good options when you do know who is starting. Attack wise, like I say, I've gone for River Plate as well. They've got Barco, of course. They've also got De La Cruz. I'm hoping he's going to stay at River Plate. Um, attack, I've got. Into Miami, but only really because of Lionel Messi. Figures are must have in your teams in the Champion America division. Um, he's obviously signed for them recently. He's been on absolute fire, scoring goals, getting assists galore. I've also gone for New England Revolution, again, mainly due to Carlos Gill, another fantastic player to have in your rest of five teams in Champion America. And I've also gone for Club America as well of Mexico. They've got some fantastic players in their attacking Arsenal guys. In some weeks, I probably will go for a lot of these players in the attacking stack. They've got Valaquez, of course. Uh, they've also got um, 
Quinos, I think he's called, is a forward. He's another fantastic player for them. So some really good attacking prospects here, guys, and some really solid defensive options as well. So moving on then to the cap teams. As I say, guys, at the start and slide, I will be using a lot of my main sort of uh, bulk of teams. I will be using squad players from those teams in my capped modes. Um, so these are all the teams that I'll be using, guys. Some teams I've already mentioned, but I've also got some other extra players as well in these teams for my capped modes. Now, starting with Asia, then, we've got some of the teams I've already mentioned. As I say, just plug my charger in. And I've also got um, Constable Sapporo. For them, they're going to be really good for the capped competitions, maybe the cap to 40, cap to 20. Um, I've also got some Toronto players as well for the cap to 70. Namely, Insignia, I'm hoping he stays. Los Angeles is another good cap team. I've got... Um, Vela, who I'm hoping is going to stay there. Nashville, mainly due to Mukta, but obviously they've got a couple of good players as well that could fit in some teams as well. So, a couple of extra teams there for the cap competitions. And also Kawasaki as well. Um, Kashima, sorry. Kashima Antlers in the J League. They've also got some really good players that could slot into my capped competitions, especially during the summer um, when the other European leagues have finished. And in terms of Europe, I've gone for 20. They're a really good team for the Cap 270 competitions. Got Benfica in there as well, mainly for the under-23 team though, where I am focusing on um, Coco. I'm, I'm hoping to sign for them. Um, but they've obviously got Rafa, who could sit, fit into my Cap 270 team as well. And also some good defensive options as well for the Cap teams. Uh, I've also got Traps and Spore as well, guys, added in there. They're another good team to use in the Cap competitions. Probably mainly the Caps 270 mode, where I will be looking to play Bacasetas, surrounded by a few more players that are maybe a little bit more lower capped. So, yeah, some really good options there. Mainly the bulk of them, though, guys, as I say, are mainly from the handful of teams that are selected in each region. The other 23 team is the similar story really guys and these are the teams that I'm going to be focusing on for my under 23 sides. So I will be selecting players from these teams. Now also know in Europe most of these teams do supply quite a lot of decent youngsters. If any of these youngsters move away from that club though permanently I will look to sell those. But that is a good excuse to sort of sell a player. Um, especially if they're going to be moving to a bigger club that's not on my radar. And that is a good excuse, a good reason to maybe start start cashing in some profits. In America and Asia, I've gone for some fresh Hiroshima, Club America, River Plate and Kashima Antlers for some of my youth prospects. So guys, that was it. That was the end of the strategy show. These are my teams as well that I'm going to be focusing on. So as I say guys, the strategy in its essence, it's condensing down to just concentrating on a few teams in Europe and in Asia and in America. Focusing on teams that historically been big clubs, have a good attack or a good defence, and then focusing on those players in that sort of area. So defence for Galatasaray maybe, and then attack for um, Barcelona. So focusing just on a handful of teams and then sticking to the strategy of just sticking to those big teams. And then selling those players if they move away from those teams. Or if you get a reward in those in teams that you're not focused on. That's another excuse, excuse to cash in some profits. And also to sign players from a chosen team as well. So some player, some teams sign a decent player that's going to be good for SO5. And will then look potentially sign that player. Same thing with the cap modes. I will be looking at the squad players in those particular teams. To fit into my cap teams. Um, because I've got quite a few teams as well, maybe around 10 teams, I'd say, main teams, um, then I am going to have a good sort of squad of capped players that should be able to rotate and fit into the cap competitions. The other 23 teams, the same sort of story really, guys. Because I've focused on big teams that generally produce good under 23 players. So I will be looking to buy players, maybe not 
that are all starters. Also, some players that are maybe on the um, the, the are backups, but they do score well when they do get the chance. I am going to be signing some of those players as well because they are going to potentially be cheaper. And if they do get the chance, play well. That's obviously going to benefit me in the 23 division. But then if they maybe get to move somewhere else, that's a chance to cash in some profits again as well. So overall, guys, I think this strategy is a really good strategy for this upcoming season. And I am going to be sharing the results as well with you guys as well, of course, in terms of this journey to see how I do get on with this strategy, see how it works out for me as well um, over the coming weeks and months. So do make sure you stick around to the channel. So that is the strategy, guys. I think this is a really good strategy going forward to condense down to a few teams so you can really focus on those teams, maybe do a little bit more research, learn a bit more about the teams um, and just really follow those teams in terms of the transfers, the performances. Without having too many teams to focus on, I think it can all get a little bit too blurred if you have too many teams to focus on. Of course, if you're just starting on so rare and you want to follow this strategy, it's probably just best concentrating on a region at a time. So maybe start with the Champion Europe division or start with the Challenge Europe teams first. Do a bit of research. Have a look at some good defensive teams historically, attacking teams. Then look at the squads for those teams. Start picking out some players. Maybe try to have about three teams, two or three teams for... Um, each of those regions like I have as well um, in my squad strategy. Okay then guys, thanks for watching as always. Smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're not signed up to Surrey yet, sign up using the link in the description. You get a free limited card for buying your first five cards on auction. And you can also follow me on Twitter as well guys. And if you did like this strategy, do let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always. And I will see you again on the next video.